Hi, I'm Bella Perez Rubio, Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. Balitang thinking, hindi breaking. In this episode, Japan and the United States continue to be two of the Filipinos' most trusted countries. The Philippines must strengthen alliances and partnership with states that have avowed to protect rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific, that which is now being disrupted by expansionist ambitions and militarizations. We take a closer look at the growing defense cooperation between the U.S., Japan, and the Philippines. As President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. promised to protect Philippine interests, it is only fitting that his administration maintains a more meaningful relationship with the country's allies. That's Dean Domanhit, president of the Stratbase Albert Del Rosario Institute. He was speaking at a recent forum hosted by his group. The strategic partnership between the Philippines and Japan, according to President Marcos Jr., is stronger than ever. Furthermore, The strong partnership of the Philippines and the United States, according to our president, leads to a shared future. The current administration's recent engagements with Japan and the United States include a potential trilateral defense mechanism and a visiting forces agreement with Japan. Although no final agreement have been reached, the institute, our institute, sees this as opportunities to promote rules-based order through cooperation among like-minded states. Of course, the Philippines already has a VFA with the U.S., but why would we need one with Japan too? Here's Gregory Poling, who directs the Southeast Asia Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS. First is the issue of gray zone coercion C. So the types of gray zone coercion that the Philippines regularly faces in the West Philippine Sea from China, but Japan faces similar uh, types of gray zone threats in the East China Sea, in particular around the Senkaku Islands, and has long experience with confronting them, which I think could be useful uh, for sharing lessons learned with the Philippines. They're called gray zone tactics because they describe a vast set of activities that fall between peace and war. Examples include influence operations, disinformation campaigns, and economic coercion. Second was the issue of military modernization for the armed forces of the Philippines. The United States remains the most important military partner of the Philippines. Uh, And at the same time, Japan has emerged as a major security partner for the Philippines. It is not as large a provider of major platforms as the U.S. or the Koreans for that matter, but it is uh, probably the third most important trading partner for the Philippines, for the AFP behind the U.S. uh, and Australia. Polling expects that Japan's security ties with the Philippines will grow even stronger now that there are defense agreements in the works. And in the meantime, Japan has been extremely creative in finding ways to uh, use concessionary loans and and financing mechanisms to provide radar, patrol aircraft, uh, Coast Guard vessels, of course, to, to the Philippines. Last year, the Philippines was the first ever commercial buyer of a, a Japanese defense equipment through the early airborne uh, warning radar that was purchased. And then, of course, there's Taiwan. Japan fully expects that it'll have to play some role in any potential crisis over, over Taiwan, though what exactly that looks like will be highly dependent on the details of, of the crisis. And as we've heard just uh, recently, President Marcos, Secretary Manalo, um, multiple other Philippine officials say, in all likelihood, the Philippines will also be implicated in one form or another in any fight over Taiwan, both because of the alliance with the United States, but also because of the geographic realities of northern Luzon being less than 200 miles from Taiwan and and having nearly 200,000 overseas Filipino uh, citizens living in Taiwan who would be in danger in case of any Chinese military action. Lately, talk of Taiwan has often been followed by worrying comparisons to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Here's Miyake Kunihiko, a former Japanese diplomat and current director of the Canon Institute for Global Studies. This is the most important lesson we learned because such a dictator in that part of the world and such a brilliant guy 
smart guy made a mistake, huge strategic mistake. So why not similar dictators in our neighborhood? I don't want to name those gentlemen, but um, they could make mistakes. That's the lesson we must learn, because dictators make mistakes. And absolute dictators make more mistakes because they have less accurate information. Miyake also flagged increasing cooperation between authoritarian states. Russian, Chinese, Iranian, not pact, but coordination. Russians are using Iranian drones to kill Ukrainians in Europe. So, I don't know whether the, the great country will supply uh, lethal weapons to the Russians. I don't know. But I'm a little bit worried about it. We'll pause here. But when we return, more on what security cooperation with the U.S. and Japan might look like. So what exactly does trilateral security cooperation entail? Greg Poling shared several recommendations from the Center for Strategic and International Studies. First, on the question of countering gray zone coercion, one main recommendation we would make is a greater degree of dialogue among all three parties to coordinate our messaging on what exactly gray zone coercion is. What is this ill-defined thing we talk about? when it comes to Chinese militia activity, Chinese Coast Guard activity, as well as Chinese influence operations, economic coercion, etc. Just last month, the Philippine Coast Guard accused the Chinese Coast Guard of pointing a military-grade laser at one of its ships. The PCG said its crew members, who were assisting on a Navy resupply mission, were temporarily blinded by the laser. But the Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Wang Silian, denied this claiming that China's Coast Guard was using a harmless handheld laser to measure distance and assist with navigation. He even showed the media photos of the laser that was supposedly used, which he said can be purchased online. It didn't end there. The PCG has since issued several reports of Chinese ships in Philippine waters. The latest incursion reported involved 44 Chinese vessels spotted near Pagasa Island. Just this week, um, I, I saw uh, yet another statement from Philippine Coast Guard spokesperson Jay Tariella to the point that the Philippine Coast Guard is now committed to publicize all Chinese coercion in, in the South China Sea and is developing guidelines for doing that. The U.S. and Japan can help here, um, both with the publicity, but also with the identification monitoring itself. Uh, and the U.S. and Japan can also help share that with regional partners, especially the Vietnamese, but also the Malaysians and the Indonesians. There's another gray zone tactic to address, economic coercion. We need a lot more U.S. and Japanese support for Philippine economic development, trade, investment, ODA, all with, uh, I think, the strategic goal of enhancing Philippine economic resilience against potential Chinese retaliation, Chinese economic coercion. One very useful tool in this toolkit will be Japan's new ODA guidelines. So Japan has recently revised its, its overseas development assistance guidelines so that it can provide development assistance of strategic significance, um, you know, with, with a mind to, to bolstering the strategic capabilities and the resilience of partners. The Philippines should be the prime target of that. He adds that the U.S. should broaden its alliance with the Philippines to include areas outside of defense. On the economic front, the U.S. would, I think, most productively engage by providing more support on clean energy transition. Um, we could look to something like the Just Energy Transition Partnership Agreements that have been negotiated recently with Indonesia and Vietnam to help the Philippines move away from coal and help deal with the, the pretty severe uh, energy shortage that's coming up as Malampaya runs dry. The possibility of joint maritime patrols between the Philippines, the U.S., Japan, and Australia recently made headlines. Last week, Australia's envoy in Manila said that talks were already underway, 
but Japan denied this and said it was still mulling maritime cooperation with its allies. Whether or not that becomes a reality, Greg says Manila is headed in the right direction. Uh, the U.S. and Japan and the Philippines can all work a lot more closely on identifying and publicizing Chinese coercion, gray zone activity in, in the West Philippine Sea. This was not possible during the last uh, presidency in, in uh, the Philippines, but is obviously now a major focus of the current Philippine government. And that was today's episode of Teca Teca News. Again, I'm Bella Perez Rubio. This episode was edited by Pedoy Blanco. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to follow Teka Teka News and Puma Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. At para sa mga mahilig manood sa YouTube, Puma Podcast na rin po kami doon. Just search Puma Podcast and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening.